Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Uh, I'm Ahmed Ishkanani, Professor of uh, Assistant Professor of Operations and Supply Chain Management at the College of Business Administration. Today, I'm going to present to you uh, securing supply chains with a blockchain-based framework. This is a joint project with my colleague Amin Mohammed from Computer Engineering Department. We are all familiar with uh, blockchain technology in the form of decentralized distributed ledger. And this is uh, the most famous application is in the financial sector. So we have the cryptocurrency networks such as Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum and many other cryptocurrency networks. But this is not the only application of blockchain technology. We, actually, we can actually apply it in a supply chain context and companies such as Walmart and Ford are using this technology in a supply chain context to optimize the supply chain network. For example, when we talk about uh, Walmart, you might have a problem when you have uh, foodborne disease and you want to track the origin of this foodborne disease. So let's say you have bought some mango from Walmart and you found that there is some foodborne disease. How do you track the origin of this batch of mangoes to make sure that you can pull out all of the man mangoes that were affected by this foodborne disease? This process used to take around uh, seven days to several weeks to find and track the origin of this work, uh, of this food, and then take it out from the market. Meanwhile, consumers might be uh, able to buy it from the market, and actually this is bad for the consumer. So what Walmart did, they created a blockchain-based food traceability system, and using the system, they were able to reduce the time to trace the origin of mangoes from seven days to just 2.2 seconds. This is one application of blockchain technology in a supply chain context. This experiment was very successful uh, that for Walmart is now thinking of uh, uh, applying it to more products uh, and, and asking more suppliers to join the blockchain-based system. So we know from research that blockchain has many strengths in a supply chain context. Uh, it allows visibility of the supply chain. We know uh, all the transactions that are available in the blockchain ledger. Uh, it allows for aggregation of data from multiple sources, multiple suppliers, distributors, retailers, and consumers. It allows for validation of the data, also automation using smart contracts, which is very useful in a supply chain context. And it builds resiliency in the network. However, it also comes with weaknesses. So one major weakness of a uh, blockchain technology in a supply chain context relates to privacy. If your data is distributed across all nodes in the supply chain, I might be worried that my data is viewable from uh, the, uh, my competitors and they might use it to uh, their advantage. Also, there is a lack of standardization. There are many blockchain implementations. So which one is suitable for a supply chain context? Which one to use? You have the garbage in, garbage out problem. So while blockchain ensures that the data is validated and not tampered with, it cannot ensure that the input data is of high quality. If I go give you, for example, wrong inventory, you can verify that the am amount of inventory was not tampered with after it was recorded, but you don't know if the input data is of good quality. Also, you have a black box effect. So managers in supply chain context might be worried about how the technology works which would lower the adoption rates. If uh, people or suppliers do not adopt this technology, then we will not be able to use it. Finally, you have ineff inefficiency concerns, and mainly related, for example, to power consumption. So as the previous presentation talked about the power consumption using the uh, proof of work uh, consensus mechanism, uh, while this mechanism is scalable, it allows, uh, it can handle a large number of users without much penalty, it actually is very slow. So it takes an average of 10 minutes to commit, for example, a transaction in a block, a Bitcoin network. This is very slow. You cannot compare this to point of sale transaction, which is committed within a few seconds. Uh, also high energy consumption, uh, as uh, the previous uh, presenter talked about, Professor Omar, he said that you can compare the energy consumption of a Bitcoin network to entire countries which is very uh, bad uh, from a cost perspective. Finally, you have a risk of centralization. So if uh, you might have uh, people forming mining pools to gain economies of scale. So 
this would be another issue that you are worried about. So we need to customize blockchain to our supply chain needs. We cannot have a one size fits all kind of approach. How do we do that? This is the goal of the paper. So this is a current work in progress. We are trying to develop a framework for designing uh, blockchain based supply chain networks. And the way to do it is we first identify eight components or features of the blockchain that we can use as the building blocks of the blockchain that we desire. First is decentralization, which talks about the peer-to-peer -peer distributed ledger of the uh, nature of the blockchain. Then we have immutability, the tamper-proof transaction history. You have atomicity, which, is, uh, which talks about tokens being traded simultaneously. We have uh, transparency, so transactions are visible. We have authenticity, which is the ability to verify integrity of transactions via signatures. We have automation, which talks about executing transactions via triggers without any human intervention. This is very useful in a supply chain context. We have distributed storage, which talks about the fault tolerance of the network. And finally, liveness. Again, very important in the supply chain context. Uh, we need transactions to be validated and distributed within a short period of time. So if you notice, not all blockchain systems have these features. And this is the point. We can customize the blockchain to our supply chain need. So the next step would be to map these blockchain features to our desired supply chain capabilities. And as an, as an example, I'll show you some major supply chain issues and how we can map them to these features. For example, the bullwhip effect. This is a major concern in a supply chain context. The bullwhip effect happens when you have information asymmetry. You have multiple nodes in the supply chain, and for example, demand information would travel from the consumer to a retailer to the distributor until it reaches the manufacturer. The more supply chain levels you have, the more uh, variability in the data you have and the more uh, inaccuracy you have in the data. And this would lead to negative consequences, misallocated production capacity, and so on. So if you want to address this problem using a blockchain-based system, the features that you really care about are transparency and uh, reliability and liveness. These features will help you address the blockchain or the bullwhip effect. In contrast, if you care about the high transaction cost in a supply chain context, then what you desire is atomicity. You want tokens to be traded simultaneously. This will lead to a situation where you don't need a third party intermediary to uh, intermediate the transaction process. And also you need automation. So executing interaction, transactions uh, via triggers without human interaction. So this also will reduce the cost of uh, supply chain transactions. So the goal here is not to give you an exhaustive list of all supply chain features and how to map them to blockchain capabilities. It's just to show you that depending on the features that you desire, you can design the blockchain in different ways. Using this design, you, you can have multiple uh, multi-layer design. So you have a fully customizable blockchain layer with access control and user business logic, information flow, and data layers. You will customize these layers depending on your needs. So the next step would be to go to the actual implementation, the technical part of the blockchain. After we map the features to the desired blockchain uh, capabilities we want, then we will go to the setup of the blockchain. Do we want to have a permissionless network or a permissioned network? So in a financial context, usually we go the, with a permissionless network, but in a supply chain context, we know the parties, the transacting parties. We don't have, want to hide their identities, so it's fine to have a permission network. This would lead us to different consensus mechanisms that can be used in a supply chain context. So instead of using a proof of work mechanism, consensus mechanism, uh, or a proof of stake, we can, for example, use a static committee or dynamic committee with dynamic election and so on, or a round robin kind of consensus that is more efficient and uses this energy and is much faster. In terms of anonymity, you want uh, to decide whether you want to hide the identity of the transacting parties fully or partially or make, that, make it fully uh, available. 
So uh, this is a decision that you need to make. Based on it, you will implement the technical aspect of it. Also transparency. When we look at the transactions, so in a supply chain context, as I said, you might be worried that my competitors might look at the details of the transaction and gain insider information that would help them uh, in their uh, competition against me in the market. So do you want full transparency of the transaction details? Do you want fully private transactions? Or do you want to have selective privacy? For example, if I'm transacting with you, maybe the two parties are able to see the transaction details. Or maybe I want to extend it to upper parties as well in the supply chain. So I'm transacting with you. I bought mango from uh, your store. I want to know the origin of this mango, where it came from, up to the farm that it was harvested in. We can select to what level uh, we want to share this information with the transacting parties. In terms of the fee and reward mechanism, do you want to have a monetary reward, such as uh, what, what is done in the Bitcoin network, for example, or do you want to build a reputation-based uh, fee or reward to encourage uh, participation in the consensus mechanism and the blockchain network. Uh, how about tokenization? Do you have physical tokens? Do you have virtual tokens? Do you have both? How do you vet the uh, validity of the authenticity and authenticity of the physical tokens? And finally, what transaction capabilities you want to build into your system? We're talking here about supply chain capabilities. So do you want parties to pull demand information from low stream or downstream uh, supply chain nodes? Do you want them to view the supply chain path? Uh, do you want to build uh, a functionality of initiating product recall, for example, via automation and uh, smart contracts? This could be all built into your blockchain. So using this design, our goal is to help supply chain managers customize the blockchain solutions to their needs. And this is currently a work in progress, and hopefully uh, once this is published, we can share it with you. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, you can contact me or Dr. Amir uh, on these uh, emails.